and then this fucking monkey just twats the drone out of the sky with a stick. Uh, hold on. Is it a chimp? This is better live up to the hype now. Monkey it's smashes drone out of tree. Drone. You got monkeyed. Yeah. <laughs> it's his face. He's like concentrating so hard. Let's have a look. What's this on? So he's droning over some water. Yeah, it's oh, like a, it's an ape sanctuary. Yeah, that'll be awesome. So they're like, hey, people, come and see our monkeys. They're free, they're fun, and hey, this motherfucker's hit my drone! <laughs> he's, proper, <laughs> he's proper going His for face it. is like... He's like, I'm having you. He does, he does a full-on Planet of the Apes, like, yeah. growl, yeah. and then double swipes it yeah. with, a, with a piece. I do believe that is a bit of... Um, Silver birch he's using there yeah. to beat it yeah, out of the sky. He's probably got like a, a lopsided <laughs> growl face on. <laughs> the drone's just that's, like, that's the, <laughs> good night, mate. That's that's him like <laughs> maximum, maximum concentration there. It's like, I'm fucking this drone guy up. Well, guess who's back? Back again. Lou is back. Oh, yeah. Tell a friend. He's I not Lee. He's not Lee. He's not Lee. <laughs> Thanks, Lee, for, for stepping in. Yeah, he didn't he didn't know he was going to step in. Yeah, it worked out quite well. I just, I just gave him a whiskey and went, want to do a podcast? He's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, don't really give him that much of a choice, he's here. You, yep. were, you have to do it, so. It was fun. We had a good day out. I don't even know if he, when he was on the podcast, we'd just been out for a massive ride out to Abersock mm. on the bikes. Like a full like eight hour turnaround day on the bikes. Yeah. Barely mentioned it. We barely mentioned it. <laughs> and it was a bloody good day as well. Yeah. Really good. Um, got to see the Brits. Thoroughly ruining a coastline. Mm. Yeah, we, we, are we do that. Shameful, well. bro. Right, picture this. You're driving down the coastline, you're above it, you're on the hills, and you're looking down, and all you see is the blue sea with a blue sky above it and an outstretch of just gorgeous golden sand. You're like, oh, well, this is in Britain. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go to the beach more? Look at this. How beautiful it is. Look at that, Lee. It's like, yeah, man. This is why we ride. This is where I'm. let's go to the beach, get an ice cream. Yeah, man. 10 minutes later, we're down by the coastline. 15 minutes later, we're realizing why we don't go to the beaches in the UK. Bins overflowing with beer cans, old people's umbrellas, some cooler bags that someone didn't want it anymore, a pram. Someone gave up on a pram, shoved it in the middle of all the wheelie bins. They lost their child, so they were yeah. just like, don't need, oh, well, don't need that anymore. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> As we got there, there was a bloke walking onto the beach in just a pair of shorts, topless, obviously, with a carrier bag full of what I could clearly see was cheap cider inside the bag. Nice. Walk, walking on, just being like, I'm going to get fucking blinded. Yeah. As he's walking on. And that's the voice of it. He was in his 20s and yeah. he was speaking like that. I'm going to fucking blinded. <laughs> As he walks onto the beach, some little toe rag just launches a two-litre bottle of Coca-Cola onto the onto the beach as he's walking off. Right. Empty bottle. Ma. Of course. And I'm just looking at it, I'm like, this is why this is why we don't go to the beach in England. This, this is and why then, we can't have nice things. This is why we can't have nice things, people. And then across the road, so, but we don't help ourselves because what do we have across from across from the beach? Do we have, like the French have, like, you know, someone some that does lovely crepes, a, a patisserie, some, some beautiful baguette shops. No, you know what we've got? We've got 20p fucking slot machines, 2p gambling things where you put your coins and stuff falls out, and kids running around who've lost their parents. Mm -hmm. I don't and know three what... pound Mr. Whippies. Three pound? Three pounds for a Mr. Whippy with a flake. It's extortion, that is. They're, they're fully making the most of the temperature being yeah. like sky high. To be fair to them, they've got like five days to make their money because that's the only time people <laughs> yeah. buy ice creams in the UK. <laughs> In five days, they make their annual wage. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The rest of the year, they just sat there going, Whoo. They make like 15 grand in that day, and then, yeah. that, and then every other day is like a fiver. Yeah, yeah, they're just <laughs> going around. They're not even paying for their petrol. They're literally, they're running at a loss the rest of the year. To be fair, as well, I got served um, my Mr. Whippy by probably an eight-year-old child who was working my own thing, and I thought, this kid looks like, like, it's like Chinese worker level this is now. Yeah, child Just, labor. It's not a trainer he's making. He's making whippies on yeah. a daily. It, all his other mates are out on the beach, you know, getting lost by their parents, yeah. getting abandoned. And he's yeah. all there being cared for, showing him how to work, work on living. the whippy van. He's working on the... No, he wasn't in a van. It was a store. It was a built, oh, right. like a, a storefront. Half whippy, half donuts. All right. 
two two things, but permanent fixtures there. Did he own it? Was it was maybe he maybe entrepreneur? Maybe maybe <laughs> he seemed like he was in charge. Yeah, drop flight, mate. <laughs> Eight years old. I was like, yeah, dude. I said to him, I said, you should be proud of yourself, buddy. He's like, what? I was like. You're in here working all day, but it's bloody hot, isn't it? And all these other little buggers are just running around and you're in here putting some graft in. I should, you should be proud of yourself. He went, yeah, take your flake, dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> Jog on, on mate. I don't think you're with him at all. Patronising little prick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that thing, we, I don't know what, I don't know what, where they do it, but you know where they're like giving people an ice cream and then they take it off them and spin it around. He's just there like <laughs> parrying you up. Can I give me a fucking cone, please? It was a good whippy though. Yeah. It was proper. Right down to the base of the cone, all the way up and through, and then a big old like he gave me. You know when you walk out, you know oh, that might fall off. Yeah, good old whippy. Yeah. So even though it was three quid, Did you have sauce on there. Yeah. What sauce? Raspberry. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I was gonna say, oh, you know what doesn't go out then? You know what doesn't go with raspberry sauce? What beards? Just a whippy Mate, in general. It just glued it to my face immediately. Oh, really? No matter what I did. And, and it was the run because it'd been in the sun as well. It was like water raspberry sauce. That's the trouble. Like the moment it comes out of the van or out of the store, <laughs> it's, it's just instantly, it's instantly going. It's a yeah, race it's already, against time. Yeah. <laughs> already down your elbow. Yeah, we went and sat on a bench dedicated to Alison. I assume that she died drunk on the beach. Yeah, um, so we sat on that bench and just looked at um, what could only be described as the greatest amount of Asian people on a beach yeah. only showing ankles. I imagine their conversations when they're driving home in the car, just going, check out my tan. And then just holding up like just their foot, bit, just yeah, their ankle and them going, ooh, oh, yeah. ooh, you got some color there. Save on sun cream. It man. was the most bizarre thing. There was tons yeah. of the traditionally dressed Asian folks at Barmouth. It was Barmouth, 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 Barmouth. I don't know how you say it. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been to Barmouth I was like, ages. This is obscure. Also, it's 2020. Can you just let them wear normal clothes yet? Yeah, yeah, you'd think They're at that the thing... beach, bro. Um, yeah, like bros are out, certain... tops off, flip flops, loving life. Do you reckon it must be like? Do you reckon they just don't care about everyone else who's obviously doing it? Because everyone else is obviously shirtless or wearing bikinis. Yeah, like it's obviously not offensive for, to see. Yeah, exactly. So it's just offensive for them them. to do it. Ah, It's a cultural thing. Yeah, no, I I get that, but yeah, I suppose change is slow, isn't it? I can help. Slow. It's been a few thousand years, though. Yeah, I think we're about, about ready for the change. How long's it taking for bloody gay marriage to come in? And wear a pair of shorts. Yeah. It's 33 degrees, bro. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Just felt sorry. So yeah, felt I was going to say it'd cook you. Yeah. Can't go in the sea. You could. Yeah. You'd be waterlogged. The sea keep was, it, to cool. be fair, the sea was two miles away. <laughs> yeah, there is always that. <laughs> the British tide yeah. is pro- it's got to be one of the most immense tidal patterns going. It literally, you don't just gain, you gain an entire new beach when the sea goes out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the good thing though, because ev- everyone's just like, oh, we want to go to the seaside. They, they don't really want to go in the sea. Most yeah. people just want to go to the beach. So we've got loads of it. Oh, it's loads. just like, we've literally got a mile of beach. Although you have to be careful. I went to somewhere down towards Gloucestershire Way. It was some kind of beach, and it looked like oh, loads of beach. As I walked out, I realised it was like poo mud. Yeah. And I was now well and truly halfway between more poo mud and safety land. But I was fully stuck, and realised walking back, it got turned into like quicksand mud. <laughs> it was, and then didn't realise I walked past like I don't know twelve warning signs yeah. saying poo mud. Yeah. Be careful. Quicksand. Poo mud quicksand. Imminent death. Yes. Don't go. Yeah. Even the seagulls were looking at me like. <laughs> we've got another one we've got another one yeah, we'll what? be picking him clean tonight Dave hey, we've got one come and find it's him just the top of his head will be poking out we'll have that <laughs> he's a bit chunky looks like he's got food in his pockets yeah yeah so you've got to be careful there's poo mud quicksand or um, Barry getting pissed halfway mm. down the beach this is why people we can't enjoy the beaches like we should we should have a gorgeous coastline and we, instead we've got uh, delinquents uh, most of the, the best beaches uh, the the small ones that no one knows about. Well, apparently, if you go down, should the... we just do a pour? We don't. We're doing a pour. We don't yeah. need to. We don't have a new one three. I'm drinking Michter's small batch, uh, 1753 establishment. Uh, this is a Kentucky straight bourbon, and it is. It's made from American corn, matured to the peak of perfection in hand selected charred white oak barrels. So it should be like a nice little woody finish to it, um, and then mellowed in their signature filtration. So pee, they pee in it. Before they send it to Britain. Obviously, Obviously of course. Like, Why not? For the Brits. Yeah. Have this. I bet it's a good one, though. Oh, it is. Yeah. And that's a half-empty bottle. I've got Cheap myself uh, 
Burning Barn, Honey Rum. It was the first Burning Barn one that we ever got. This was your favourite for a long time. Yeah, this was the... Uh, like, that's why I want to try it again, because it's been so long. I'm just like... And your palate's changed. Yeah, I was like, now my standard has also improved. Yeah. I'm wondering whether this still holds up, because I fucking loved this originally. Well, the reason so. it was nice is because it was a real honey taste to it. Yeah. It didn't have that... It wasn't chemical. It was real. You could taste, almost taste the honeycomb in it. Yeah. It was... Ooh, oh, that yes. was a good one. Go on, Burning Barn. Burning great, Barn. Yeah, great bottles. And uh, they've actually got a new flavour coming out, haven't they? Yeah, what were you saying it was? Apple cider something. Oh, he's finished it in one. There we go. Yeah, it, so it's a, an apple yeah. cider cask, uh, I think. Apple cider cask. Give him a tinkle, see if he wants to try it. Yeah. Hey, if you're watching again, being as you were watching last time. Hello, sir. Hello there. Hello. Send me a free bottle, please. It's <laughs> not how you do it, Lou. I'm being, you have to say. I'm being subtle. No, no, <laughs> Did you, no you have to be like... If you would like us to review your products, send us some free <laughs> shit. <laughs> you don't just say, Give me free shit, bro. Oh, before you have the whiskey, I'd like you to try one of these I don't want to original try sweets. I'm sorry, but from... they look absolutely disgusting no, listen, now because they, they've melted. They might have been left in the sun. They might look like a cat's testicle, but they've literally they're sat in a, a pool of their own juices. <laughs> they've gone from a sugary treat to a gooey delight. Okay, I really these... don't want to try it. I'll, you have one first. No. I'll, no. I saw Lee's face after he was eating them. <laughs> well, you know what it I've is. already saw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, damn it. I've already seen. So these, so you know that they're a mega sour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're like a black currant mega sour. Look, I'm gonna go for the gooiest, testiclest one. Oh, it looks terrible. Ready? Isn't this gonna oh. ruin the drink? Oh, it's fizzing. It's fizzing. Mm, that's yeah, not you, normal. You, you're not selling this to me. <laughs> I am, haven't we? <laughs> I'm mm. sorry, but they look horrible. <laughs> it's the way they're oozing. Mm, it's a weird texture. Yeah. <laughs> it's like sucking on a sour kiwi. <laughs> if not peeled. <laughs> it's gone hairy. Ooh, that's gone not right. That's kind of furry. It looks so fucked. That the amount of things growing on them. Yeah, there's, there are random dark patches. I assume that's mould. Mmm. Them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to spit that out right now. <laughs> that is not good. What is that? I don't know. It's, but it's no longer sour, which is worrying. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the sour gone? <laughs> the sour's completely gone, and it was kind of furry. Okay, so I'm going to be here later. Cool. Ah, that didn't work. In the bin. <sighs> oh, it's all right. We'll cure it with a cigar and whiskey. Because <sighs> whiskey is, has antioxidant effects, and there's something to do with whiskey helping cure... Certain throats and throat, um, uh, so yeah, those things. Yeah, whatever. So, uh, some random excuse. Where were you anyway? Where'd you bugger off to last week? Like a big giant dog owner. Oh uh, well, I've just had so much going on at the moment, and I've really one of the main things I've been struggling because I got COVID fucking weeks and weeks ago. I've been really struggling with yeah. some uh, not too bad, isn't it? Brain fog and fatigue. Oh, you mentioned um, the c word. They're gonna flag it now. God darn it. Now we know that stupid infomercial thing at the bottom saying, oh, check some kind of nonsense can, can about the something. edit out what I said? Nah, I'll just leave it. It'll be right. Maybe they'll miss it. Maybe. What have we got here cigars-wise? So we are going for, these are independents. Independents? Why would you put the sticker of your own branding like that? That's retarded. I can't even read what it's... I think it's called independents. These smell really sweet. Premium cigar. They, they do come with unlimited enjoyment. That's always what I want. Always a bonus. I yeah. smell it. Oh, God, that does smell sweet. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Ooh. Ooh, that's... Wow. Ooh, I'm quite looking forward to this. I don't, that surely can't be... That's going to oh. be, like, artificial, right? That's, like... No, you can, you can smell that. That's the tobacco, sweet tobacco. Yeah. Oh, wow, that smells delicious. What is that? Everyone's so glad they listen to oh. this podcast. Just, just, just a sniffing and yeah, sucking. Yeah, just us sniffing things. Yeah. Right, I'm going to try this Mictus. This is a straight Kentucky bourbon. Me too, I'm going for... After a furry sweet. Oh, yeah. Honey rum. Burning barn. Oh, crap. That is... Oh, that's hot. Ah, oh, that's fiery. Wow. I wasn't ready for that. Oh, sweet but fiery. Nice. Wow. Mictus. Uh, small batch Kentucky straight bourbon. Not for the faint-hearted. That is, with ice in it, fiery. No other word for it. Not warm. Flamey fire. Burning mm. Barn, still the best mm. honey rum. Burning Barn, best flavoured things we've had. Every other one we've had was chemical arse. Yeah. 
Yeah, most some of them to the point of it of being rank. Yeah, re- 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 yeah. Burn- going to be a bit kinder than that. Yeah, no, it's just being rank, isn't it? Yeah. Some of them, Burning Barn. Somehow they're like they, whenever they add these extras in, I think it's because they it's because they're using real products. Real, I think they're not literally like literally has honey fermented through yeah. or something like that, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not that they've just like oh, there's some essence of honey, and they're just like adding that in. That yeah. like it tastes so different. It tastes like real honey. Mm-hmm. We have to get us. So yeah. I don't think it filled properly. Where's the other one? I don't know. You tell people about your gimpy hip and where you've been. I'll go mm. get a little lighter. Oh, my, my broke ass hip. You fill people in. So, um, if everyone remembers when Lex tore his bicep, yeah. he was using BPC and TB500. So, those are some things that I started using a few weeks back, um, which has actually helped quite a lot with the, the rehab of the hip. The physio actually saw me about a week after I'd started. Bearing in mind, I'd been seeing him every week. Um, there was quite a lot of scar tissue, loads of inflammation. Um, and like, I think it was about a week to 10 days later after taking it, he literally was like, oh, if I didn't know you had an injury, I wouldn't be able to tell that it was there from actually feeling it. It's still there, but it had healed so quickly and the inflammation had gone down so fast. Um, it was, yeah, he was really surprised. I actually told him what. I'd been using and um, pretty much from the day after as well I all the tightness that I was experiencing pretty much went away so I have been easing myself back into training but it's been challenging because when and I'm sure Lex felt the same when you kind of go in at training and you can't really give it your all you're just going in going through the motions just so you're getting moving but you can't actually you can't get much enjoyment out of the session because it's a it's a little baby session where you're kind of easing yourself in. Yeah, movement's medicine though, definitely. Like, I remember that when I came out of not being able to do something, I was pressed weight for the first time. Mm. I cried. Yeah, with, yeah, I remember with you saying joy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Not like Ooh, just I was mid set giving it and it's like moving and I started to feel everything going and tears just started streaming out my eyes. Mm. You know, like uncontrolled, not like, but I wasn't sobbing. It was just like I was expelling tears for. It's yeah. like, well, you don't need these tears anymore. Yeah. I don't know, it was weird. It was a weird sensation, but... It, it you, was were, a, you were out for longer than me from training there, right? Uh, what that? Seven weeks. Oh, but then nice. remember, in that seven weeks, I, as soon as I got out of the car, that yeah. I was able to move, yeah. I was training one side. Yeah, true. So I was always... That's what really helped, because remember, it was you knacker one side, keep training the other, because it's, it helps prevent um, atrophy of yeah. the damaged side, because obviously... Your hormones work systemically; they don't. They're not site specific. Yeah, yeah. So, just been struggling to get back into the swing of things. All of my habits, all of my normal routines, have gone fucking out the window, um, com- compounded by this kind of brain fog issue that I've been having. So you, you know, did the, you did have a legit. I, I noticed it. You, you yeah. were, even voice messages. You were kind of stumbling. Yeah, I was. I was just, struggling to remember words constantly. It was really weird. Yeah, struggling to remember words constantly. I was. Um, the, when it first hit me, because the first week after COVID, I didn't, didn't notice. And then I was driving somewhere and I was like, pulled up to a junction, check, check. And then I was like, now I would normally go, but I don't actually remember what I've seen. So I, was like, <laughs> I was like, check again, check just, again. Just and then like, I'm like, nope, sh- this isn't going into my brain. And then I'm like, stop and look for a long time, check, oh, okay, yeah. there are no cars coming. And then check. I was literally having to like check three or four times at each side because my brain wasn't like processing what I was seeing. I was like, it was it was really hard to explain. Just everything was running super slow. Yeah, but you were absorbing bo- information. Yeah, but you, my body was still just trying to do things normally as, you know, pull up a junction and then you'd go. But yeah, it, just, it was weird. Multiple little things like that. Um, conversations were just like... I'd, forget what I was talking about midway through the conversation. Yeah. I was trying to like explain something to somebody, somebody and the word was just gone and Oops. not anything complicated. It would be a word like <laughs> because or <laughs> something like that. Um, so, anyway, how are yeah, you feeling now anyway? A lot better. Um, not 100% still. I think, you know, that that definitely played into it a big in a big way, but the fact that my training went out the window, which also meant that my nutrition went out the window, which also meant my supplementation went out the window and my routines and my meditation and my breath work and all the things that I do, even audiobooks, which I always try and keep one book that's educational, one book that's fictional, so I kind of can unwind. Yeah. 
didn't want to learn about anything, anything educational. I just didn't have the time for. I just you lost all motivation for life. It, I, I literally, I, I don't know what in my headspace. The reason why I was like, oh, I just listened to this fiction book. It was because I was like, oh, I need a break. Do you know what I mean? I don't, like, I need to like decompress. I've, I've got like, I'm, I can't focus on some something that's work related. And um, yeah, I just needed to have like a little bit of a, a gap from it. And I didn't, I wasn't fucking overworked. Like I was just, I don't know, I was just tired permanently. Yeah. But uh, I actually think I probably needed to push myself a little bit more, maybe. I don't know. So do you reckon in times when you like flagging like that, do you think it's, it's good to just drive yourself into the rhythms, like force it? I think you do need to at least attempt that. I think the working out is important. I think you've got to force yourself to those sessions, even if you only stay for half an hour. I think just the fact of breaking that boundary and getting that win of going and getting there. Yeah, yeah, because my, my first couple of sessions, you obviously had one experience of it being like, you know, really great to the point where you were a bit emotional about it or you, you know, yeah, you, you, water was leaving your eyeballs whether you wanted them to or not. Oh, it was weird. It was, it was um, euphoric mm. is what it was. Like it was, it was a little bit like, you when you're like high, like coming, yeah, yeah, <laughs> coming. Like coming in the broccoli, coming in the gym. The, yeah. uh, 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 yeah. uh, <laughs> For me, yeah, I was really. like, I finished the session. I was like, well, that was fucking boring. Really? Yeah, because I was just like, I'm, I just couldn't. I, I, I was so worried about hurting myself that I was like, right, I'm just going through some motions, like going to keep it nice and easy, which it was, and it, you know, and I felt like I did something. I got ached after, mm. but. It, I don't know. I, I like. I need a bit of intensity to actually keep me engaged. That's you know why jujitsu feels really fun for me, opposed to going out for a run because yeah. I'm fucking trying Thoughts. not to get strangled. Yeah, yeah. Like I need some kind of a a high. I need a high stimulus that's gonna gonna suck me into that moment. And I think a big part of me, for me, like the psychological benefit I get from training, is the fact that when I've got that barbell on my back and like if I'm not paying attention that like 200 kilos could like break my back. <laughs> yeah. I have to just yeah, be like, in the moment. Like death under training is always a strong motivator. Yeah, yeah like, like so actually, if you're struggling at the moment with it, like maybe get a mate with a big knife. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. get him stand behind you. Just like, yeah. you know, get this lifted you fucking now. Do it. I'm going to stab your left butt cheek. Okay. And you slowly like work your way up from buttock to shoulder blade. Yeah. Eventually, eyeball. Yeah, that's good. Good idea. Yeah. That's good advice. Just on the bench and they're just dangling the knife. Or, just above you, above yeah, your well, face, like just swinging it. Yeah. <laughs> just in two fingers on there, just yeah. per perilously just pivoting I'll between. Let, I'll the let it go. I will. Thumb and the I index. promise I will. <laughs> so anyway, I started to ease back in now. More my sessions are getting slightly more adventurous. I you did have. You're injured. What? Do you think the injury put you down? Like, yeah, set yeah. You off, off kilter. Well, for the first few weeks, not at all. I literally. Probably yeah, like four, or five, was... four or five weeks in, and I was like, "Ah, oh, this is sound. Yeah, I'm all right, like, enjoying that." that. And then I, I, I literally one week, and then I was just like, "I'm fucking sick of this now." Yeah, that was like me with my arm. You have that kind of bolstering month, mm -hmm. three or four weeks, where you're like, "Nothing can affect me. So what? It is. It is, it is what it is. It is. It's what cool." It is. And you deal with it, and you deal with it, and you deal with it. But then there's just this one moment where it kind of all tumbles in, and and I had that with my arm at one point, mm -hmm. and it, and I was doing really well. Like I was ahead of everything wherever I went in anywhere. I was ahead, but I was just like, yeah, but I'm limited, still massively limited. Like can't like getting frustrated with stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Couldn't ride my bike. Couldn't ride the motorbike. Couldn't go out and do things. And I think it was uh, just that. There's there's a a point I think where you need to have a moment where yeah. you just go, well, this sucks, giant big balls. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And mm -hmm. I almost like. Felt like I couldn't really. I didn't want to be that guy who was fucking whinging about stuff, but everyone was like, "Oh, how's the how's the hip?" And I was just like, "Eh, it's all right, you know, just yeah. plodding along." Because everyone sees me at the gym training and this, that, and the other, and the, you know, the whole point of everyone being at the gym is to do some kind of movement. And the fact that I was like, I felt like I was the only person who couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the only thing people. It was the first thing everyone's going to come and ask me. I don't know. Yeah. It was um, surprisingly. It was surprisingly fine, and then flipped on its head and doing surprisingly shit. And uh, so yeah, what have, you, what have you done now that pulls you out of it? Well, the fact that so I had one session with a friend, um, a big bodybuilder named Marcus, and we did a. He, it was a leg day for him. Why are the big bodybuilders never called like Steve? It's Marcus. No, Mar I mean Marcus. Marcus Dominguez. Like, what a name! Yeah, he should be a wrestler. Yeah. 
That's a wrestler's name. We should get him on actually. So he coaches other bodybuilders. Um, he knows Imran as well. Um, oh, that's cool. And he's uh, yeah, he's he's one of the one of the coaches that actually does look after people's health and make sure that they kind of do things very sensibly, slow and steady, wins yeah. the race. Um, but when did you ever meet a bodybuilder called Humphrey? I don't think there is. <laughs> Doesn't there's no bodybuilder ever called Humphrey? <laughs> they always call like your probably boys like oh, I'm Gary. What don't you know what Here's Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> Humphrey's yes. playing polo, that's why. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I had a session with him. I just joined him for like the first half of his leg session and then I went off and... Because I've been doing like some full body sessions just because, I don't know, if it feels pointless. I can't have a full leg session at the moment, so I'll just join them all together. And uh, I pushed a little bit too hard and set myself back for a few days. And that was a... Because I, I was feeling good and I'd been using BPC and everything was like moving really well and That's, I had yeah. no issues at all. And then I was like, oh shit, maybe I can actually push this a little bit. And I didn't go balls to the wall by any means, but I pushed, I had a little bit more intensity than normal. And then for like two days after, my hip was giving me a bit of grief. And I don't, I had a little thi- worry. The thing is, I'm not sure whether that's the feeling of just the fact that the scar tissue there and that's the scar tissue like just getting aggravated or is that actual damage because then a day or two later no pain no discomfort um and then like i was doing box squats this morning yesterday i don't remember what day it was maybe it's this friday morning. today bro i don't know i think it was this morning yeah it was this morning um and did like 150 for 12 no bothers yeah feels fine feels you're back on the mend yeah mm. so you're back on the mend you're back on the podcast you're back on the whiskey you're back on the cigars yeah Life is good again yeah you got a puppy that's some rowing at seven pounds a week yes yeah, yeah uh he's now at 20.8 kilos what did he start at uh 7.5 so in six weeks he's you bought a hellhound tri- nearly tripled his body weight is you that bought right? a hellhound he is a demon he but did. no he's actually brilliant to be fair not a demon at all he's quite sweet Mm. Let's get back over next week because where they're supposed to perk up, isn't it? So I'll, I'll ride over. Yeah, that's just reminding me actually. Yeah. So you know Mary, who's got us these lovely glasses. Yeah. Have you seen that she's doing a charity thing, a charity walk? Oh crap! Yeah, Mary, I'm supposed to do a video for. Her. Yes. So she's doing all this stuff for, for Mind Mental Health, um, and she's doing a, a charity walk, and she's had a few other people that have been getting involved with it. Hang on, has she got like a page? Yes, there is a um, a donation. I think it's like a GoFundMe page. So oh, that's we'll, cool. Right, we'll link it. Yes. So she's doing the... And what's it for? Uh, mind. M- what? Mind. Mind. Yeah, mental health charity. Oh, so my, oh I thought you were just like picking a, a, just a part of, a sort of like consciousness. <laughs> just mind. What's the charity for? Mind. What's the next one for? Soul. Mind, body and soul. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, she's got quite a bit of traction behind it now. So, yeah, she's doing that on Friday. What I was going to say to you is, and I'll ask you on the podcast because it's, you know, putting pressure on you. Because <laughs> <laughs> it can't run away. <laughs> um, do you, oh, and that's my phone. <laughs> do you want to uh, do come want. down when she, she's walking to the gym? It's like a 15-mile walk. She's doing it with a few other people. Um, do you want to be there at the gym to meet her? When she's on a fr- next Friday, but she's aiming to be there like middle of the day. Ooh, I'll try my best, yeah. Yeah. So you can do some filming, then we can come back and record the podcast. Oh, yeah, sounds I thought it'd be nice just to greet her with that. Yeah. She's a, she's a big fan of you. Ah. So, so. If you said that too quickly, it sounds like you said she's a big fanny. She is a big fanny, too. <laughs> she's a big, she's fan. a big fanny, too. She's a big fanny, too. No, she's, she's a big fan of you. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. Oh, dear. L- look what Lex is doing. Yeah, we're back. What else we got going on? What else we got going on? <sighs> what happened this week? So I did my other sock run, did that. Um, I swear something funny has happened. Can't think of it. When I've had to do far too many adult things this week. It's been really boring. Everyone's whinging about. Um, I don't know why that's not working so well. Um, let me refill it again. Let me try again. It's these things, right? Like that has the little gas penis head that it has doesn't fit the light of the vagina. Vagine. Vagine. The the gas peni does not fit the light of vagine very well. When are you going to be able oh, to announce? Off. The big announcement and how oh, and what I, and where and when. So and I'm trying how. to catch up with all my footage on the U of Tube to mm. get me up to date and then I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a world bomber. It's a mm. bomb. It's a conversation bomb. It's a conversation nuke. Yeah. yeah like it's, so it's not just a kapoo, it's a kapoo, yeah, and like, then like afterwards. The coming out part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's my lover, Humphrey. Yeah. Hum- <laughs> The rare bodybuilder. Yeah. <laughs> Such a unique soul. He is so lovely. 
Yeah, uh, so I'm trying to catch up on myself to then be able to do that. That will be a fun conversation when we have that. That is a life changer. Mm. Life changing. Um, do you have anything small and hard and thin? Yes. To be, <laughs> to be able to twist. Well, it's not hard right now, but if you give me a minute. Okay, what about if, uh, Britney Spears music video, schoolgirl. <laughs> what if I squeeze my hand boobs together like that? And I, oh, hang on. Go. I put my hair down. I'm done. <laughs> Do you, do you want yeah, these cigars are delicious. They're sweet. They, have, they are smooth. I swear they've covered this in fucking honey. Or I something think like it's, that. it's covered in just deliciousness. I don't care what it is. Do it to more of them. It's divine. Is that right? Word for a cigar? Lick your lips after there's yeah, literally it's sweet. like. Google it. See what they do to it. What am I Googling? Well, we don't even know what they're called because we can't read their bloody label. Oh, that is a thick smoke. Um, they're called Independence Cigars. Independence Premium Cigars. Unlimited enjoyment. They're not lying. Maybe they are made with like honey or something. They're delicious. And then underneath the unlimited enjoyment, it says, Smoking kills, quit now! Get help to stop! That's so aggressive, that advertising. And that's more hilarious than it is helpful. Especially when it sounds like Club of Bangs. <laughs> it does. I pity the fool. Smoking kills. Quick now. <laughs> <laughs> what else I do? Been on my motorbike. Rode out to Abbasock. Had an ice cream. Got it in my beard. Came back home. Did a podcast with Lee. Then did what the next day? Don't remember. God, my brain's crap. Have you got Dun brain fog too? Nah, just general. General. General brain. General. Braininess. I've done um, some cool video edits that are coming out. The, oh, I've been filming the new Worst Pain series. That's been doing really well. That's gone all viral again. Yeah, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. The old YouTube's been recommending them to me. I know, sons of bitches. They're happy when they're making money. If you're not making money, they're like, fuck you, bro. But um, that's, they're fun to do. We're on a real roll with them now. Mitch is doing really well as well from it. He's like, I did another... Well, he's booked out now every day, all day from it. He's had people traveling from... Uh, like York and London and all sorts of places. People wanting to come in from abroad. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Apparently these people don't exist. These trigger point guys. Yeah. Man, if you're doing massage therapy now, if you're a sports masseuse, learn trigger point. Start learning this stuff because not many people do it and it's life changing. It's really good. Although the last one we did was um, Gua Sha. Yeah. Which is basically gra grass thing or something it's called. And basically getting fucked up You get up a, basically a big blunt metal tool and you, you scrape over the skin. And the idea is that it helps just not break down the, the fascia between the muscle and the skin, give you more mobility and stuff. But it does create these gnarly looking bruises or like a, a severe redness to the skin. It looks a great, it looks like you've been in an accident. What's it called? Erythema. Oh, yeah, not a clue. Never yeah, heard that way in my life. He's outsmarted me there. I think it is. is I did, did sports massage we have you. when I was 17 or 18. Why do I never know this? So no one asked What are the massage, secret lives have you been living? Yeah, I did sports massage. What? Like, and did it? I didn't do it as a job. I, oh, I you tried did the course. Yeah, I qualified for it, yeah. Did they have you rubbing dummies or each other? Each other. Oh. But I was in, um, so we were, we were in a college and we were in their health and beauty. So the whole thing was health and beauty. So it was literally a college full of women. We were the only guys, oh, bar like a handful. A cheat code. Bar a handful of like, you know, there were some gay guys that were in like some of the hairdressing classes. Maybe they were straight. I don't know. I'm making an assumption there, but like. <laughs> it just made a massive assumption. Yeah, but they, they were very, very camp. So like, it's oh, okay. not like, I'm not just assuming any guy that just, does I hairdressing. I just see you walking past just the thing just going, oh. <laughs> and then <laughs> off to your sports massage. But, um, yes. yeah, so, so you're, bu you're bunch of gays, right? I'm off to rub a bloke. <laughs> yeah, so we were, so firstly, we'd all start off rubbing each other. Yeah. <laughs> as you do, because we were all shit and we didn't know what we were doing. But then as we got trained up, and this is something that they, the, all of the others that were getting trained up, you'd then start to swap with other classes. So some of the guys, the girls would ask our class to come and get waxed or to get fake tans or all this hang shit. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Re rewind. Waxed mm -hmm. girls wear. No, no, we didn't do the waxing. The girls that were getting trained to do all this like beauty tech stuff, yeah. so waxing people, fake tans. You went and got waxed. Yeah, so they needed more volunteers. Ah. So then they, so they would get us to do. I just had it in my head that a girl custom. walked into a room from a beauty college and walks in and she goes, "Hello, boys, I need a wax." <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know whether you would pick to do that though, like. Oh, you didn't. Hot girl walks in and wants waxing. So you think? So your immediate reaction here is hot girls walked in, pants off. But the reality is, hot girls walked in. She hairy. Yeah. 
Gonna w- nah. wax my hairy legs, mate. Yeah. All right, pal. I think I think that I think you defeated there. Yeah. I don't think that's as good as it sounds. No, but it was the other way around. So but fortunately I actually got away. I never got I never way. I never got waxed, I never got spray tan. Did you sack back and crack? Nope. I didn't I didn't do anything, didn't want anything. I somehow I just got away. Can imagine it. what that feels like. Sack back and crack. Has anyone ever had a sack back and crack listen to us? Well my back has no hair. Like so a, the back would be fine. Some people might have lost a bet. Yeah. And had it done. I've had my leg waxed. I've had a butt cheek wax, but I don't have much hair on my butt yeah, cheeks. Yeah, I had my lower leg wax for charity. Yeah. And I swear they didn't do it right because they were bleeding everywhere. No, I think that's kind of what the happens. chicken when, plucked it. When, I think when guys... Tom, can you remember Tom at the gym? He got mm. his chest waxed for charity and he has a fucking hairy chest. Oh, wow. We've got a video of it. Bad times. He did it in the gym with everybody was like, watching. It was like 40-year-old virgin level. It was bad. <gasps> it was bad. Once he, got, it was, once he got started, he seemed to be okay. But it was just the, the initial... initial. But he was bleeding, and he was bleeding and like he had so many ingrowing hairs. So, what you, afterwards? Yeah, oh, yeah. Bad. He literally like just got spots all across his like. Yeah, chest I don't. And it's not worth it. I got waxed once when I was doing the bodybuilding shows. Mm-hmm. I only did how many bodybuilding shows did I do? Three, four, not that many. Um, I got waxed once, hurt like hell, and only lasted like eight nine days yeah. and it's like coming back through because it's all about when you get w- what's where in the hair cycle you're getting waxed mm. so if you get waxed towards the end of your hair cycle anyway yeah. it doesn't make a difference because they're going to get new hairs coming through mm. so it lasts bugger all time so you got to work you out you to like double do it so you get it then when the new hair cycle comes well, through they lie to you as well and be like the more you get it done the, the less it'll come back more frequently and I'm like liar you're a liar that is not true like, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I just think you're just ripping out hairs so they're not able to get, like, as thick because they're getting ripped out more frequently. But they definitely don't grow back less. Like, it didn't. And, and yeah, like you said, ingrown hairs, pain, the whole shebang. Mm. Just buzz it. Buzz it down. I've got those skeleton buzzers now, and they take it down to the skin. Enough to, like, if you were to look at me with no top on, walk, like, out on a beach or whatever, you wouldn't think, oh, there's any hair there. And there's that little bit of stubble that only I can really feel. And yeah, there's no ingrowns, really no pain, yeah. no nothing. It's effortless. It takes literally probably a minute and a half to do your entire chest. I think if you really, really want it, just do that laser Laser stuff. it. Yeah. That's it. And you can buy the laser guns. Mm. They have about, I don't know, 20,000 kabunkies. Yeah. That's the technical term. So kabunk, kabunk, kabunk. And apparently you only use a couple of thousand and you're done for your smaller areas. So yeah. people are selling them with 18,000 kabunkies left. So you can... You just wouldn't want one over, overpowered and you... Yeah, you can bend one. What, what have you used it for? Uh, armpits. What do you really use it for? Asshole. It was my ass. I had to my asshole. Yeah. <laughs> that gun has only been around my asshole. <laughs> Thoroughly, many times. It is whistle-worthy. <laughs> <laughs> when, they, when they let one go, it's just... Oh dear. I um, hope that's a thing. It sounds like a toddler learning to whistle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm contemplating getting one though. You know, if we're doing the shoulders where we get those random patches of. Right, what does your body think is going to happen where your left shoulder, not your right, only your left shoulder requires a little bit more warmth than your right? What is it expecting? What, what wind chart system is it following? I'm sure that your left side is ever so slightly more hairy than your right. Yeah. Because there's more... Because your heart's on the, heart the left-hand side. Right, it's yeah. something to do with... A bit better blood supply. Yeah, it's slightly... The oxygen or the blood is but slightly better. when you have one big left bollock. It's like super subtle, but like I, I suppose with like hairs and stuff. I, I occasionally... I don't have any on my shoulder, but like I'll occasionally get like one hair. You are... You are... You don't need anything. You are smooth. You're like a seal. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, since I started taking testosterone though. Oh yeah, it's coming going? in. It's coming in. Well, it's been shit because I've been <laughs> fucking broke. I'm broke. <laughs> so like, I'm, that's the thing as well. That's also a bit frustrating because I've not even really been able to like. I was hitting my stride like towards the the end, right before I got injured. I was super busy. I was training shit loads with jujitsu and gym training. Work was really good. Like everything was just like I was operating at like a, a good level. I was in flow. Yeah. Like that flow state, but it had been rolling for like weeks. And I was like, oh, mate, this is great if I can maintain this. And then everything's kind of gone out the window. 
And when I spoke to him, around, he just said, keep everything the same. He said, you don't want to like it come off to then have to recover your... Yeah, because I was going to say, what, what would he say? Because obviously, if your lipid profile is all right and your estrogen levels are all okay, then your tendons and ligaments, in theory, should be fine. Yeah, there was no... Not like, you're not super dosing. No, no, not at all. It was nothing to do with it. It was just shit timing and bad luck. Oh, no, I know so it wasn't that, to do with that, but for healing purposes, like... Yeah, it was, just, it was all right. Yeah, just keep it the same, basically, um, because you don't want to come off and then have to deal with your... Te- testosterone being crashed and then try and recover that because that will hamper recovery yeah but also you wouldn't want to have any more because also that can potentially hamper recovery so it's just like stay where you're at pretty much and just ride it through so i don't know feel like i've almost i haven't wasted it by any means but um i definitely haven't got the full potential out of it and it's probably helped me maintain more muscle mass oh, than what i would have done without undoubtedly um but yeah, it, it's one of those, isn't it? So I, it's, it's really hard because a few people have asked me, it's like, oh, how's it going? I'm just like, oh, it was going good until I <laughs> tore my hip flexor. <laughs> <sighs> but I suppose, you know, <laughs> shit happens, doesn't it? What else were, what were we talking about prior to that? We've got to... Hey, oh, yeah, so I am I think I'm going to get one of those laser things because I have this one patch on my left shoulder I've had forever and a day. And it's like, I don't need to want to have to shave you every four days there on my left shoulder. Like, why are you even there? You don't need to be there. There's no point in you. And also, I watched a thing today. You remember Nick Hogan? Hulk Hogan's son. The absolute yeah. underachiever of the world, in my eyes. <laughs> well, I'm, uh... Your dad's Hulk Hogan, and you can't even be asked to be muscly. <laughs> like, you have one job as Hulk Hogan's son. Be jacked. Son. Just be, you know, even just a little bit jacked. Just be semi-jacked. But don't you dare pull double guns on something when you don't lift, bro. When did he do this? I, I I went down a rabbit hole today. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, he has a beard now. Yeah, the Adderall, he's bold as shit. The Adderall's working real well. Just yeah, went, yeah. Uh, clearly. Uh, oh yeah. So let's talk about that too. Finish, finish this one first. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I just went on his thing because I was like, you know, Hogan's worth like a hundred plus million because he he won a lawsuit that alone paid him a hundred million. No idea. Yeah. Oh, is this for the porno? Yeah, he yeah. won a massive lawsuit, huge. It paid him more than his entire wrestling career in one go. Yes. And then obviously he has all the merch and everything, still rocking from Hulkamania. So the dude is flush. Um, so Nick Hogan obviously doesn't have to do anything in life if he didn't want to. And he's hosting, he's a DJ now, apparently. Which I feel, feel is like, what you become a DJ if you have a rich parents and can't be asked to do anything, but want to say you're, you've got a cool job. Because you pay... To play wherever you want to play. Yeah. You don't care if you sell tickets. Nobody cares if because you you don't need paying. So they'll let you play. Yeah. I just think it's a cop out. Your dad's Hulk Hogan and you're a fucking DJ. <laughs> I like how passionate you are about this. Do wrestling! Be a manager, be a commentator, be involved in the thing that's provided you with the wonders of your life. But he doesn't need to. <sighs> Well, I know. Maybe he hates it because of his dad being traveling, or like maybe <coughs> traveling all, Stop all around being and a sensible devil's advocate with me, Lou. Just curse him out. We could, uh, I don't know, could have real negative associations. Maybe, anyway, maybe he got touched no, because as a he's child. doing these like wrestling promos mm-hmm. for his Beach Hogan hoedowns or whatever the hell they are, where he DJs at this beach club thing. But he does like a, a wrestling promotion. He's constantly wearing NWO T-shirts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, he's just being supportive of his dad. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, yeah, but then he, he, he's like with his dad doing like bicep things like this, and he's n- no, no, Nick, go lift, go take some testosterone, go get jacked, then come back and tell me, brother. Has he have you uh looked him up to see if he's done any nice mixes? Just got, got some Nick Hogan, no, tunes. he puts Apple playlist on Nick Hogan playing in the background. <laughs> He don't know. Anyway, so I went down that rabbit hole. Anyway, so yeah, Nick Hogan. Go check him out. He's bald with a beard. But he did, his, his beard's actually pretty good. I give him credit on his beard. But then, on oh, my point of the Nick Hogan thing was, dude has the hairiest shoulders in the world and doesn't do anything about it. He's just rocking around with his hairy gorilla shoulders, with his big bald head and his beard. Yeah, but you're Nick Hogan. You ain't going to do shit. But he doesn't look like a Viking or doesn't look like... like if you're going to be hairy-shouldered, you've got to be like... You don't have to be jacked and lean, but you've got to be like a barrel-chested dude that looks like he could rip a tree up. Mm. 
Yeah. It's the only way you Form get away with hairy shoulders. Yeah. Because then you're like, yeah, that dude, does. he needs hairy grip on his shoulders because he lifts stuff. Yeah. That's he's, just padding for when he's carrying Yeah, he's log. carrying deers home that he's killed with his bare hands. Yeah. If you've got hairy shoulders and you don't look like that, shit, shave that shit. I don't care if you have to do it every two days, shave that shit. That's a big commitment, though. I know, but that's where you get the laser. And feel like, I feel like your your um so, yeah. your manscaping is like above what most people's are because you have to because like you're shirtless a lot and you're doing like no it's personal preference I've always done it oh, I've, I've never liked body hair I don't like body hair but fuck I wouldn't put that much effort into shaving myself every few days I'm just like ah but if you get the skeleton shavers it's yeah, like a three minute job even so I just. I don't know. Well, you'll never know because you're a seal. I wait till I can't see my penis and then I'm lost like a <laughs> trying to shave my bush. <laughs> it looks like a mushroom in a sponge. <laughs> that's that's, 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 that's your level of when yeah. you decide yeah. to shave. Emma, I, when, I'm sorry for you. When it, I feel, I'm when, so if you're, sorry. If you're watching, when it looks like this. <laughs> when it looks like... <laughs> if you're not watching, he just stuck his thumb through the middle of my bed. <laughs> I remember there was a mate of mine, I won't name him. But as we were growing up, he was very, very into like preening and uh, skin and hair and all that. Like he was, because he had bad skin when he was younger, he was, he became really anal about taking care of himself because he was obviously very self conscious about it. Obviously, the spots all went with the right medication and treatment stuff. He was completely a good looking lad, too. Um, but he got with this, got with a girl. I remember, like, I've grown up with this guy all my life. You know who you are. And uh, he got with this girl. And um, it was his, his serious relationship. Married her, kids with her now and everything's like that. So it was full on, you know, that's going to fall. Um, and I remember there was a video of him in the Alps, like running out into the snow, like stark bollock naked yeah. to like dive into the snow, like a funny <clears> thing. <throat> and we were all watching it all laughing and joking. And he runs out and he had this big bush going on and the but like i ignored penis i ignored the fact he was in the snow i know all the funniest went dude <laughs> what's with the bush and he just turned around to me and went it's called a serious relationship lex it's called a serious relationship <laughs> <laughs> he's just giving up yeah. he's giving up on it he was like i turn it down when i can be asked just with a cushion but prior to that you're like well that's more than two millimeters Let's spend half an hour today doing this. Oh, I don't think I've ever put that much effort in. Emma, again, we, we, on behalf of men, we apologise. I, I don't know, like <laughs> once every few weeks, maybe. Yeah, but like, we, you don't get that much growth. No, I don't like it. Grows no. pretty fucking slow. Not right? three. If you're if you need to shave yourself downstairs every three days, woo, you got some stuff going on. Yeah, I'd say Matt, I'd probably say I'd like, probably get, like every, every like three to five weeks. That's probably Let us know in the comments section. Yeah. Where's your time frame? Yeah, how frequently? One week, two weeks, three weeks? Are you waxing? I always wondered as well, what, what what's the general consensus? Not that we've got many female listeners, all 12 females that listen to this <laughs> podcast. Like, shaven, trimmed, or just... Are you talking about blokes? Bush? Yeah, like, what's actually the preference? I'm pretty guys? sure that, like, fully shaving on a bloke isn't appealing. Because no, it probably looks like a dead so. chicken. Yeah. I, I just think trimmed would make the most sense. Trimmed. So it yeah. still looks like you're an adult. Yeah. <laughs> but like... Saying that though, with women, we go the other way. Yeah, I know. But then I think that, I think hairless is seen as more feminine. Not mm. that I'm saying like, personally, I think a, a variety is nice. But like, I think... I don't think a variety is nice. I don't like, I don't like hair. You like... Don't like it. Bald. Yeah. Bald AF. Not even a landing strip. Landing strip, even to me, is like it's still got to be kept nice. Mm. And even then, like it's still, I prefer it wasn't there. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I, I like it mixed up. Mm. Yeah. No. No, I even think about it now. <laughs> <laughs> be interested. What's what's everyone's preference on? Well, there's going to be everyone who likes something who likes everything, isn't it? But yeah. What's the majority? I mean, I'm a, I'm a buzzer. Buzz it down. Yeah. Trim it up. So you do you literally trim to the bone like? Let me just say this: if you come to my house yeah. and you want your hair doing, just gonna let you know those shavers have been other places. Yeah, in his arsehole. <laughs> 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 oh. But yeah, just trim it, trim it down, buzz it down. Don't use clippers; you'll cut your nuts to shreds. See. Actually, you've to got to. I did cut my box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, you've got to get the skeleton clippers. 
that's what you need. The ones that they use to do fades and stuff like that, that's what you need because they, they are so fine, they won't catch your skin. Yeah. <laughs> well. That's the trick. There we go. Now we all know. Yeah. Be interesting to see what people say. Oh, are we going to... Uh, before uh, the podcast started, we were talking about what we're going to do to help grow the YouTube, grow the podcast in general. We've uh, gone back and set up a few shorts. Yeah. So we're going to repost some shorts that were like some of the little highlights from, from the past because YouTube seems to favor shorts quite a lot at the moment. Um, there's a there's a few other little things. I don't know if we were actually going to try it, but there was one thing where you kind of, you have to slow down a video. Oh, yeah. So It's to mess with the YouTube algorithm. Because on, on YouTube, when you put up a video, there's um, a rating of the amount, the percent of time of the total video that people have watched. Mm. So say 100 minutes and they only watch 30 on average that you've got 30% viewership. Um, but if you actually made a video in two times speed and then told everyone they have to, because you know you can go onto the little cog in the corner and choose your play yeah. speed. You can then set that to play at 50% speed. So the video to everyone else would then play normally. But you're getting double the watch time according to that. YouTube analytic. Yeah, so then everyone... So YouTube would think, oh, everyone's watched 200% of this video. It would basically yeah. double the viewership of the video, which then would push it out a lot yeah. more. So we're tempted to do a little... Two-minute... Just a, a short little test little, video. Yeah. Just to see actually how well it performs, see if it performs better than our regular videos. To see how many people want to screw with the algorithm. Yeah, because it really is. It's interesting. It's such a it's such a game to be played. It and, is annoying and... that it's a game, though, because I feel like it takes away from true creators who are doing really good stuff, creating really good content, and they don't get the recognition for it. Like, I've watched some channels that have got... And their views on videos suck, and their videos are amazing. Mm -hmm. like, it, there's so it, much effort into it them. It pigeonholes you to follow the trends, which doesn't all... Like, we can't... We can then re-edit our podcasts yeah. to be shorts, and but like we can't make shorts just me and you sat there and have a fucking conversation nah. in a minute. But here's the thing. So YouTube wanted to get rid of clickbait, so they started doing this conversion of views watched on videos and then pushing videos that retained retention. But then that in turn made people only follow trends to get the retention, which in turn made more clickbait. So YouTube screwed themselves. You've done a little smoke ring back in there. Look at that. Oh, my first yeah. smoke ring. I didn't even do it on purpose. I have no idea how to do them. Um, yeah, so they actually doubled down on clickbait being created by creating this stupid yeah. method of monitoring stuff because they don't judge content, and that's the problem. Mm. Yeah. You need to judge what's act actually being created because so many people have been bypassed that just deserve to be seen by so many. And there's so many just gash channels full of nonsense that are just proliferating because it's just def it's they're just providing nonsense to the algorithm for people to consume easily, quickly, like short videos and people, are, and it's just nonsense. But we know that people, because of TikTok and this, consume nonsense. Yeah. Like, well, the most viewed one on the crewcast page is the the video of you and Danny Andrews training at my gym in the shorts. In a, yeah, it's, it's not because it's the only short we've ever done. No, no, we've done a couple of shorts. Oh, no but either way, like that just shows, and that gets loads of random comments on it. So that's being pushed to random people who have no idea who you or Danny Andrews are. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I like that theory. I like the fact that they're giving you different avenues to use things, but I it don't like is the that the that hypnotization of it. Like they're just this. They have this just complete and utter ownership of what they decide to show people. It's kind of scary. And also the fact that it's just like, we'll record, a, you know, hours of content. Mm. You'll edit it all, hours and hours of work. Or throw a short together over fucking 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Everyone can see that. Yeah. Hours of work, well, fuck that it, shit. You see on shorts of channels, and they got like shorts of 20 million views of all mm -hmm. this stuff, and you go on the channel, and the videos get hundreds of views. Yeah. So it's not even crossing over. No, no, it doesn't cross over. So where's the reward? What, come on, YouTube, where's your reward for these well, people? Well, the, the shorts aren't monetized either, are they? Yeah, they are, but terribly. Oh. So if you have 20 million views on a on a short, you've probably earned like 50 quid. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I bet you YouTube are earning a shit ball more than yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. So. Anyway, let's not get bogged down in that nonsense. Let's keep it light. No. So if you see a random weird little video pop up on the Crewcast, yeah, just, just uh, have a have a have a gander. Yeah, have a, have a little looky low. I wonder if you can make a tune with a, a cigar thing. That's Ooh. what Lexi's farts sound like. <laughs> oh, I've got a bad gut. 
<laughs> one thing I did actually want to talk about before we uh, run out of time because we're we're keeping these. Trying to keep them shorter. Trying to yeah. keep them to an hour. So you got like, and you, Lou, yeah, be listening now. What you got three minutes? Oh, for fuck's sake! That doesn't sorry. mean ten. You're you know like, what? Actually, no, no. Scrap this. Then you, I'm, you I'm can't keep, physically I'm, do I'm, it. Can I'm you? putting it on the. Sh- we'll we'll you do a short. Do I'm going to talk about it in the short instead. Then okay. I've got us a topic for the short. What's now? the topic for the short? I'm not saying. Well, you have to. So no. at least you know why, no. what they're going to no, watch. No tough shit. You got to wait. No. So I'm just going to talk about the the fact that. The things that I've been going through recently, no matter how much you've got your shit together, stuff can fall apart. Stuff can you, We've you can that a lot though. Do you not you think? can the the fact that it's more the at any point it's it's an ongoing thing. It's oh, not yeah, that you just away. like got everything sussed out. Okay, yeah, I know and it's saying. kind of yeah, you can kind of you got to rebuild sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was in a real good place for the most part, and yeah, then. Yeah. Completely getting derailed, and I think that was a similar thing to happen to you I think it was with, the, the, with, of, the, with the with the well, obviously COVID and, and then the bicep. I think it was lack of Friday nights and whiskey, and, and not and not in a joking way. I think, be, regardless, it was because we had this reprieve on a Friday. It was like a it was a, a get out. It was a breakaway, and so it gave you that reset point, and we removed that reset point from our weeks. So then we just because we're self employed and there's no one giving us clock in and out hours and all this stuff. Everything just kept rolling over and piling over and rolling over and piling over. Yeah. And even coming to the podcast became a chore of the day oh, yeah. rather than an enjoyment part of the evening. Yeah. And so it's very, well, was very like important. Messaging you on the evening saying I'm still stuck at work. Like I'll like yeah. can we just keep pushing it back? And then it's just like we'll just leave it instead because it's just getting ridiculous. Mm. And so, so I think it's super important that everybody now yeah, we'll finish on this one. I think it's really important that you find that thing that lets you break away from everything else that's going on, that gives you a moment where you just have fun. And I'm not saying just a piece, I mean fun, actual fun. Mm -hmm. Something that gives you uh, nothing else to think about but what you're doing and enjoying the moment you're with, the people you're with and what you're doing. It's massively important. So I don't know, whatever that hell that's going to be, you have to try and find it. I don't know whether it's getting together with friends, but making an effort to make sure that you have this thing that you do on a certain, at least once a week and go and just just be fucking childish. Yeah, play play an Xbox game. Do you know? Go out to the pub. Whatever it doesn't. Have don't to play be. Xbox online with each other. Be in the same room. Like, no, have a human. Play online. With you can. No, nah, it's not the same. It I don't is. Think it's the same. No. The, no, v- it's not because chat. there's whole generations that are becoming weird because and I, this is the, they're interacting on game systems in a world where they're being just like bombarded with all these sensations and they're talking to each other in a screaming crazy manner that is not how humans interact okay it's different if so if you know these people in real life they're your actual friends and then you catch up with them via that method it's different because it's like yeah what are the chances of you having a heart to heart though or something like that whilst playing Xbox across the platforms um, you can't see the person. You can't you see how they're doing. It depends yeah. on what you're playing. Depends on what you're playing. If you're playing yeah, something like Sea of Thieves, I'm not poo pooing it completely, but I think there's better things you can do. Yeah, I, well, I don't know. It depends on the individual. If that's something that you find easy to to relax into, and that's a, a break for you, then do that. Otherwise, you know, go out, socialize, go rock climbing, go. Oh, let's finish on that. I went bouldering. Yeah. I went bouldering for the first time in six years. Wicked. We're gonna go do that. How are your hands feeling? Fine. They're good. Look, now? Not even bleeding. I was really impressed. Look, the stumps have grown back yeah, into normally, fingers. Yeah, look, normally this bit here, I've definitely normally ripped skin yeah. off at this point before. But oh my God, does it let you know why weightlifting is not the only thing you should be doing? Yeah. Wow. Do you know what's really humbling? And this is what we'll finish on. I spent 20 minutes trying to circumnavigate this one little section of this red climb, okay? And it was a compression climb where you had to pin yourself between areas and then kind of work your way around a mass obstacle to get to the side. And it took me five attempts... And I mean like intense attempts. I had tutoring from the dude running the place to help me get around it. And when I got to the top, I was like, yes! Fucking got around this one point where I had to use my right arm as a pendulum and kind of get my momentum and swing around this corner to then get the grip. Then And then I did it first time, but then I was too tired to do the rest of the climb. But I was happy. I was like, wow, I made it around a bit. Okay, I know how to do that now. Tried again. Failed. Tried again. Got around to the second pit. Did it smoother. Had the energy. Got up to the top and was like, yeah, defeated it. Do you know what humbles you? When a 12-year-old girl then walks up after you and just saddles up this thing first time as her warm-up. I was like, cool. Cool. Now I know where I am at this. Yep. Did you suplex her <laughs> off? <laughs> just punched her in the face and left. Yeah. Yes. We've got to go to a different rock climbing place because I'm banned from that one. <laughs> banned from that, but worth it. Definitely worth it. Cocky bitch. <laughs> 
totally know what she was doing. Yeah, it was super humbling, but it was really great because there's not many other places where you can stare at a 12-year-old girl climbing a wall and people don't think that you're doing something weird. And I was actually learning something. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I learned something from watching a 12-year-old scale a wall. Yeah. And I didn't get put on a list. <laughs> So. so there we go. Hope you've all enjoyed this shorter form of podcast. Let us know if you enjoy it. If you can rate us on whatever platform you're watching on, please do it. It really helps. Mm, leave us a comment. And, uh, hopefully lose like uh, the video. Lose grandpa hip will be even better by next week. You'll yeah. be, we'll all be back on a roll. I'm flowing again. Videos are coming out. Shorts are coming out. Crew casts are back on track. Lee is now Lou. Has hair again and everything. Yep. And um, we'll catch you in the next one. The short will be next up and then we'll be back again on the Monday. So there yes. we go. So you know what it is. Leave behind in the week. Gone. What was bad? Bring forward what was good and have a great week. Toodle pip. Toodle pip. <laughs> Look at that. No blackout. I know. Yes. So we think. Ah!